It's a great pleasure. And uh, um, with Mike, the cooperation is always awesome. And I've got a couple amazing announcements. But first, uh, first, let me tell you a little bit more about what we have done and where we are going. And of course, Gibraltar is a great place. It's probably one of our main competitors in today's world. And we are also looking uh, to, to work uh, with Gibraltar, but we are slightly different. Uh, we started from scratch. Uh, we started with big media fuss. I think close to half billion people actually got to know about Liberland through just the first two months of media coverage. Uh, we found a, a very nice place on this planet that was unclaimed by any other country. Uh, it is uh, just two and a half square miles, so it's even smaller than Gibraltar. It is three times larger than Monaco, though. Uh, it is between Croatia and Serbia, so we can imagine that it is also interesting uh, territory to start a new country. And it was amazing how much, uh, let's say, ideological media support and also financial support has come together uh, to build a new country. Uh, we were portrayed as one of the foremost tax havens, uh, but we, don't, we say we are not tax haven, we are tax paradise. Uh, we are different, we are open about uh, the financial deals that are being done in Liberland. And honestly, we started with uh, nothing but a, a small building, uh, which was there. Uh, we started the country uh, truly uh, on a significant date, which was the birthday of Thomas Jefferson. We wanted to invoke the spirit of American Revolution. Uh, we wanted to do the same thing like the, the Tea Party has done um, hundreds of years ago. And uh, we were inspired by ideas of founding fathers, including the voluntary tax system, uh, which is something which I believe is, a, is an idea which we have to bring back uh, since all these technological changes that are coming place uh, with blockchain technologies are completely changing the ways that the states are going to run. Uh, we also said that our government will be limited. We will have just a couple departments. We will have a Ministry of Interior and Minister of Interior is actually with us, Dennis Spirits, uh, back there. Uh, we will have, uh, so we will take care of internal security, we will take care of justice, and we will take care of diplomacy, nothing a part of that. But this is, again, similar idea like the founding fathers of the United States. And I can remind you that we are very far away from what United States were meant to be by their founders. Uh, we, we could see that the United States are consuming more than 40% of their GDP for the state budget. Uh, and uh, it used to be 3 to 5% of GDP, and this is, again, where we want to follow uh, these uh, old ideas of liberty, where we say we don't want more than 3% of, of the GDP that the country is going to create. And we also said that we are going to run everything online, and this is where I will tell you more about the partnership that we have already created uh, with different blockchain startups uh, to manage our jurisdiction. Uh, there is already a pilot project on Android, but we will launch a big thing in April uh, with most of the services. And again, we are inspired by existing countries here. Uh, E-residency in Estonia is probably as close as it can get uh, to what we are putting together, but we want to be a little bit more forward-looking, putting everything on blockchain. The idea behind Liberland is, is uh, simple. You never change things by fighting the existing reality to change something, bring a new model that will make the existing model obsolete. And uh, I found this quote uh, maybe half a year after Liberland was born, but I realized this is exactly what we are doing. Uh, we are people that are simply fed up uh, with the existing political systems, with all 250,000 pages of EU regulations, uh, with the, the enormous corruption and the crony capitalism that has been grown in the existing countries, and we're starting a new society from scratch. And we know what does it take uh, to build a country. And we know uh, that with one, one eye closed, we are also recognizable by other states. The Chicago Journal of International Law wrote an uh, excessive, uh, a large study about uh, how Liberland could be recognized by other countries. And they remind us that, of course, the ma main four aspects of what it takes to be a country recognizable by other countries is to have population, defined territory, government, and capacity to enter into relations with other countries. So we are close to half a million people now registered. We are considering some 150,000 people for citizenship at this stage, but I can tell you it's a lot of work uh, to get to meet these people uh, 
properly assess if they are good citizens, if they can provide some value to the society that we are building. But we also have enormous amount of interest in, in building a business. Uh, we have more business applications than, for example, Liechtenstein had operating business during its peaks as a tax haven, which is pretty amazing. Uh, if you consider, you know, we haven't even started building in Liberland yet. Uh, and we have a territory, it's very well defined. Uh, we actually, in order to avoid any territorial dispute, uh, we have given uh, Croatia a half meter and Serbia half meter of our territory. Uh, and we actually uh, were able to progress in terms of uh, negotiating with Serbia. We already sent the proposal for establishing a border between uh, Liberland and Serbia. And with Croatia, the situation is more difficult. Uh, we are having, a, let's say, it's not a dispute, but we are working hard with our legal team uh, to move forward. We have elevated our case to the Constitutional Court of Croatia. Uh, we hope to have a, a feedback from them by January, but all these things take time. Uh, we still see that Croatians are coming to our territory. They're harassing our activities. So we are dealing with this. Uh, I think we will successfully deal with it. It can take a couple more years, uh, but we don't care uh, because uh, Liberland is not just this small area uh, which we are claiming, and Croatia is not, by the way, until this date, there is not a single claim on, by Croatia on this territory. And if you look into any maps that Croatia has, the, the territory looks just like this. And Serbia already said they don't mind creation of Liberland. It was not formed on the territory of Serbia. So this place was quite special. There are not too many places like this on planet Earth, especially not in Europe, and this is why we have chosen it. We have a great team of, uh, in our government. Uh, for example, Thomas Wolfs was a key diplomat during the Daytona agreements. He knows the territory very well. He was working on the Holbrook administration. Now he is our Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, Dennis Spears has been working with a number of governments before, and he's a great uh, support to our team. But we are looking even into more into the future. Uh, the more we look into the justice system, the more we are looking into decentralized solutions. And Kleros.io is one of these solutions, uh, which offers a great way how to solve, how to solve disputes in, in a completely decentralized way, simply randomly picking juries from the existing citizens that make the decision transparently on blockchain. And, uh, we are actually looking forward to launch our ICO in cooperation with their, uh, with their platform. And we've got a great team of people working with us. Many of the big names uh, of, the, of the blockchain industry today are already on board. Um, people from Bancor, people from Bitcoin Swiss, people uh, from Crunch Fund. Uh, and many others uh, that are on our advisory board. Uh, we are going to officially review our plan or reveal our plan in January of what our, what our key uh, goals are in making this decentralized jurisdiction. We've got a set of targets. Many of them were already uh, achieved, uh, but many of them are to come. Uh, but, you know, these are the, that's the serious part about it, but there is also a little bit of a fun part when you're creating a country. Uh, you can be a real country unless you have a beer and an airline. It helps if you have some kind of football team or some nuclear weapons. And this is where I was amazed that Liber Beer, as a company, has been started only three weeks after the country was, was uh, announced. And, of course, I didn't have any interest in that. Somebody just started randomly uh, to brew a beer, and it has bankrupted. Uh, the, the beer is no longer on the market, but because our market is healthy, we've got a new beer, and it's doing fairly well. It's been now brewed in three breweries. It's also a decentralized brewery. Uh, you, can buy it, you can buy it in the uh, Czech Republic, of course, where the founders are from originally, uh, but it's now being brewed in, in Serbia, and it's now being brewed in the United States. And by the way, they're going to do the ICO before the country itself, uh, which I think is going to be a great event. It will be the first brewery, and it will be also one of the first properly, uh, security, properly uh, done security token on the market. So uh, I'm looking forward to their ICO. I wish them good luck. This is the brewery which I visited in the United States. Very supportive guys. And we've got airline. 
I think many of you, because of the value of Bitcoin, have searched so much now looking into an alternative and better ways uh, to travel. Uh, so we've got uh, a bunch of smaller planes, and now because again of the value of Bitcoin has risen so steeply, we also have a couple jet planes in the in the in the group. So recently acquired three new jets, I believe, uh, but they're located again decentrally all around the world. Uh, there are two jets in Germany, two jets in Thailand, uh, one jet in the United States, and uh, this company, Air Liberland, is basically putting together Liberland plane owners and that are willing to charter their planes. And we've got a great amount of uh, supportive professionals from different industries, and I think the largest one is our architectural community. Uh, it's, was, it's headed by Patrick Schumacher, the CEO of Zaha Hadid, um, probably many of you know uh, the company that is doing amazing work. Uh, these guys are making fantastic uh, designs for cities and airports all across the planet. And they also organized Liberland Architectural Challenge. We had more than 80 architectural studios that applied uh, for this challenge, and we received a lot of nice pictures. Some of them were more extravagant, making the whole Liberland a one nice golf course, uh, and having just a couple of offices. Some of them are a little bit more practical. This one is from Harvard University. Uh, it shows you how the territory could be uh, occupied. But all of them share one thing, you know, it's possible to fit only as much as 140,000 people in this territory, otherwise we would be simply too overpopulated. Which really makes us think, you know, we, we actually need more territory uh, to accommodate our Liberlanders, especially if we're going to progress in this space in the interest of, for citizenship. We might actually uh, reach uh, uh, one million by next year, and, and then it will be impossible to fit all these people inside of Liberland. But this is the, one of those plans which was deployed in, deployed in our uh, cadastral maps. So we are looking globally and into cooperation with other countries, and of course we are also looking globally for more territories. Now we've got 90 representative offices across the planet covering most of the civilized world. Uh, some of the offices have opened physical uh, place as well. This is in center of Belgrade. We'll have the official opening in January. Uh, we've got another office in Prague, and you feel free uh, to come to our Christmas event, which is on 13th, so uh, the coming Wednesday. And it will be a very nice event with a number of ambassadors coming, with members of Czech Parliament. And we also an are announcing official cooperation between Czech uh, Chamber of Commerce and Liberland Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is a pretty great achievement if you consider the Czech Republic hasn't recognized Liberland yet. Uh, our diplomatic efforts take us all around the world. Uh, we've got, let's say, seven rotating diplomats that are working on recognition of Liberland at this stage, and me as, as well, of course, flying around and talking to different governments. But this was the significant uh, success this year, where we signed the Memorandum of Understanding with the go uh, government in Somaliland. And this is one of those places where it would be great to start uh, Liberland II. Uh, this is, this is the, the plan that we have, and it, it is a plan which I think is realistic to start next year. Uh, by the way, Somaliland is, uh, and everybody tells, to libertarians, if you like, if you're a libertarian, you should go to Somaliland to see how, or Somalia, how it works. But honestly, Somaliland is not Somalia. Not too many people know actually that it exists. But it's a completely stable, nice country with three and a half million people living there. It's twice size of UK, and uh, it is also it is also has a very strategic. Uh, position. It is uh, the only transit uh, to uh, landlocked Ethiopia. Uh, there are lots of cargoes going through the Gulf of Eden. Uh, and uh, that's why, for example, there is a half billion dollar investment by Dubai ports. Uh, so we want to be in the flow of that capital and we also want to build a small city. And uh, again, I've got a small invitation for you. Uh, if you felt like having a, a holiday, uh, next week, uh, then on from 17th to 23rd, we're invited by the designers of the uh, of the El Gauna city, and which is a private city in Egypt. And I, I believe many of you haven't heard about that city. Let, can I ask you how many people have heard that there is a private city in Egypt? One, two. 
Yeah, there is a three private city in Egypt, uh, which is amazing, by the way. It was built by Savary's family, which is the wealthiest uh, Egyptian who owns most of the telecommunication companies uh, across uh, the Middle East. And uh, it, it can be a great inspiration what could be done in Somaliland uh, for Oliver Land on the shores of the ocean. And we've got another plan, and again, that's uh, an invitation for you if you wanted to join our delegation. Uh, from 17 to 23rd of Janu uh, February, uh, we are heading to Honduras uh, to let, take a look at ZD zones. And this is something which, and maybe Naomi, uh, she knows about it a little bit, but I believe many of you haven't heard about it, but Honduras has recently changed its constitution, so you can basically start your own country. And we want to be there because, of course, it's a tropical paradise, and we want to support that notion. And we also have some 50,000 Spanish Americans our Hispanics, uh, Hispanic Americans that applied for citizenship of Liberland and that we would like to uh, help uh, to relocate to some place where they can flourish without unnecessary regulation and unnecessary taxes. Uh, I, love, I love this island especially because uh, it has an L sign on it, but uh, we will actually get to see more territories during the, the visit. Uh, I'm, I'm working hard with the other heads of states and, and important political people across the planet, I think the most uh, favorable or closest jurisdiction to Liberland is Liechtenstein uh, with Hans Adam uh, as, it, as the head of the state. Uh, we had the support from Gary Johnson or from Syed Kamal, the chairman of European Conservatives and Reformists. So they're pretty strong supporters also in American Senate and Congress, uh, where I'm hoping to speak in late February uh, next year, uh, invited by the Freedom Caucus. If you come to Liberland, the situation, as I told you, is a bit difficult. Uh, the only way how we can settle Liberland at this stage without having a conflict uh, is uh, through water. So we're putting more and more boats uh, to Liberland. Uh, there is also a special event uh, for the New Year's Eve and because we're bringing in a sauna and a small spa to Liberland. So if you didn't know where to celebrate your Sylvester, you might consider that. And. Uh, uh, what is the great announcement that I told you about that we met, we, we met yesterday with Mike and uh, we said that we are going to do a detainee and I think it would be great to do that detainee in Liberland on our new boat that we are bringing there and it would be on 13th of April 2018. So, uh, I just want to show you a couple more slides that just that you know what we are doing. We also launched a company registry. Uh, We've got now some 80 companies that applied there, but we are overwhelmed with applications, so please don't apply because it's, it's a little bit difficult to do KYC for us and we, we need to speed up the processes a little bit and we also want to implement a new, new system. But one of the first companies that uh, registered in Liberland was Universa, which just recently fundraised $25 million and they pledged 5% of that for development of Liberland, which was very nice. Uh, so, and we are working together with Aragon Platform, uh, which will be a new generation of Liberland company registry. And I, I believe many of you know that. I just hope that it will be a great partnership that will, that will move things forward. So, I'm um, more than happy to reply to any of your questions. I'm at the disposal president at liberland.org or foreign at liberland.org. Uh, and I hope to see you in Liberland one day. <laughs>